It was a cold January morning when my mom called and said, Mimi is gone. I was confused at first. My grandma suffered from Alzheimer's and she'd gotten out of my aunt's house late at night. It's why the family made the very difficult decision to put her in an assisted living facility with 24 hour watch just a few months earlier. Over the next few minutes, I understood. My grandma, the woman who taught me how to roller skate and ride a bike, had gotten out of the facility. And it took so long to find her. She died of exposure. I'm not proud of my first reaction. Anger. We're gonna sue, I said. They're gonna pay. I couldn't process what had happened to her as a granddaughter. But I could process it as an attorney. And everything I was hearing told me it was a textbook case of nursing home neglect. So I told my mom and my aunt, I'm getting us a lawyer. It was the one thing I knew how to do. I called a lot of law firms that day. Most didn't call me back. It was the weekend. But one firm called back almost immediately. And the person on the other end of the line was the highest ranking attorney at the firm. She stayed on the phone with me for over three hours. At one point, cell reception got so bad, I told her I'd probably lose her. She said, if that happens, I will call you back and I will keep calling you back until I get you. This is important. She made me feel like I mattered, like my Mimi's life mattered. I'm sure she had other things to do that day, and she just needed the basic facts of the case. She spent a large chunk of her weekend consoling a stranger because she was kind. That conversation changed me. I started to think about kindness as a business philosophy. Kindness is a deliberate way of impacting everyone that we encounter and serve. Kindness as a way of life. You see, kindness is often talked about as fleeting, spontaneous, random. Practice random acts of kindness, we're told. But kindness can be purposeful. It should be strategic. We should be investing in kindness in our institutions and our lives because we are in desperate need of it these days. From social media rants to road rage to political ugliness to riots, suicides, and shooting after shooting after shooting. Anger and frustration, fear and loneliness are spilling over everywhere. We live in a world where we can connect with anyone almost instantly. But vast numbers feel unseen, unheard, under attack, alone. The more we communicate in digital spaces, the less we seem to see the human beings on the other side of the screen. The less we seem to connect in any meaningful way with the people right in front of us, the less we seem to listen to anyone with a different point of view. But we can change that through purposeful kindness. It begins by taking the time and making the effort to truly see the people that we encounter every day, whether in person or online. I love Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And there's an episode where Buffy gets infected by demon's blood. But the result is that she can hear the thoughts of everyone around her. And there's so much pain and confusion and loneliness, it cripples her. She finds herself facing off with a fellow classmate who's holding a gun. And when she tries to talk him down, he gets angry. He says, don't talk to me like we're friends. You think I'm an idiot. And she says, so truthfully, I don't think much about you at all. 
No one does. Everyone is ignoring your pain because they're way too busy with their own. We don't intentionally ignore people most of the time. We don't intentionally misunderstand or intentionally offend. But we also don't intentionally get out of our own heads often enough to see people for who they truly are. And when we don't see people, it's easy to say and do things that hurt. And it's easy to be hurt by the things they say and do. It's easy to assume the worst, vilify people, put them in boxes where they don't really belong. People are complicated. <laughs> they're messy and they're interesting. Social media lets us see people in new lights. It lets us experience things through different eyes. We can witness all of the moments, big and small, that make each of us human if we choose to use it that way. Commit to kindness by looking past bumper stickers and t-shirt slogans and Facebook rants. To see whole and complex people worthy of being treated with dignity and respect whether we like them or agree with them or not. Kindness sees. Purposeful kindness goes beyond just seeing people, though. We have to let them know we see them, too. We need to acknowledge our fellow human beings in meaningful ways. We need to connect. We need to smile more. <laughs> when I was in junior high, I was really self-conscious about my smile. I have big teeth, and for a while they had braces on them. It wasn't very pretty. But I remember people commenting on my smile, saying how happy it made them feel. My Mimi was one of those people. So I made the decision to smile more. It was weird at first, but I was amazed at how quickly people perceived me as friendly and approachable. A smile says, I see you, and you matter. It invites conversation and connection, and it's good for us, too. Our brains are hardwired to mimic the facial expressions of people that we see. So when we smile at someone, chances are they'll smile back. And as we're both smiling, our brains are releasing positive chemicals, chemicals that relieve pain, that reduce heart rate and blood pressure, that lift moods. The very act of smiling can decrease anger and frustration. That's a good thing. There are times, though, when a smile doesn't seem like the right way to connect with another person. Sometimes we encounter people in pain, people who are suffering. And because we don't know what to say or what to do, we are tempted to turn away. Kindness doesn't turn away. Last June, a JetBlue flight carried the grandmother of an Orlando shooting victim toward his funeral. And the flight crew wanted to do something to connect with this woman and acknowledge her loss. So they passed pieces of paper around the cabin for the passengers to write their thoughts. And when the plane landed, no one rushed off the flight. Every passenger waited to pay their respects. In one way or another, they all said, I see you. I hurt with you. You matter. That's kindness. It doesn't take much. A squeeze of the hand, a quick hug, a text, a tweet, a Facebook message. One way or another, kindness connects. Now, our digital world has made seeing and connecting with people easier than ever before. But instead of using technology in these positive ways, we tend to use it to talk about ourselves and down to others. 24-7, people are talking on social media and blogs and status updates and content. If everyone is so busy talking, who's listening? 
We seem to have adopted the idea that we don't really believe something unless we talk about it often and loudly and do everything in our power to shout the other side down. It's hard to be kind when we're busy passing judgment. On that JetBlue flight, there is no way every passenger had the same political beliefs, religious beliefs, views on gun control or LGBT rights, and none of those differences mattered when they all decided to be kind to a fellow human being. Kindness holds its tongue. I want you to think about something you deeply believe, something that goes to the very core of who you are. It defines your identity. Now think, what could someone say that would make you change your mind? If we're being honest with ourselves, the answer's nothing. If nothing will change our minds, why do we think our words will change the mind of someone else? especially when they're plastered on Facebook and drip with sarcasm and contempt. One of the most profound acts of kindness and one of the rarest in our world is to listen without judgment or agenda. Instead of trying to argue someone to our side or prove them wrong, why don't we get to know them? Why don't we ask them why they think the way they do and then listen? As the ever wise Atticus Finch tells his daughter in To Kill a Mockingbird, if you learn a simple trick, Scout, you'll get along better with all kinds of folks. You never really understand a person until you consider things from his perspective. That's a tall order because considering things from the perspective of others may change the way we speak, the way we act, maybe even the way we think. I admit, a commitment to being kind can sometimes feel like a muzzle. I have thoughts and opinions I want the world to know, and I see people using fiery rhetoric and winning likes and fans and applause. And part of me wants to add my voice to that noise. But I know that applause is only coming from people who already agree. It's not changing minds. It's not finding common ground. It's preaching to the choir. And look where that's gotten us. Everyone wants to be heard and understood. And everyone has a really good case where they should speak first. But very few people are willing to listen and try to understand. Someone has to listen first. Let it be us. Kindness listens. Purposeful kindness puts people at the center of everything that we do. It reminds us that our words and our actions have real impact on real lives. If my grandma's facility had prioritized kindness even a little. If someone had just taken the time to see her that day, she would still be here, dancing and playing her ukulele. And I wouldn't be struggling with anger over her death. But kindness also forgives. I'm still working on that one. <laughs> you may have guessed I'm a vengeance girl at heart. The vengeance only leads to more hurt. And I want to heal. So I'm trying to forgive those who took my Mimi from us. It's not easy. But it's a choice worth making. For the sake of healing, it's a choice we can all make. So let's choose to see the humanity of those who scare us, offend us, wrong us. Let's choose to connect with the people who cross our paths. 
Let's choose to listen to experiences and perspectives that are different from our own. Kindness matters. You matter. The people you encounter every day matter too. Commit to kindness and be of service by showing people they matter to you.